You in there? Are you listening? Because we got a lot to talk about. Let people use AI to create all sorts of wonderful things. I mean, John did the iPhone. Johnny did the MacBook Pro. I mean, these are these are like the defining ways people use technology. Next up, Google just failed a safety test and they want your kids to use it. In the future of military tech, well, it's gonna look a lot different from a CEO in a Hawaiian shirt. OpenAI, they've got this amazing robot, the new Stargate data center, and they just acquired the iPhone designer's company. Remember the guy from Apple? Anthropic, well, they're coming up next. So I was thinking about this. And on one side, you've got Google just released the new AI model and it failed a safety test. And on the other side, they've got a new program where they want our kids to use it. What are they thinking? Let's dig into it. And one of Google's recent Gemini AI models scores worse on safety tests. And it talks about in a technical report published this week, Google reveals that its Gemini 2.5 flash model is more likely to generate text that violates its safety guidelines than Gemini 2.0 flash. These surprising results come as AI companies move to make their models more permissive, and in other words, less likely to refuse to respond to controversial or sensitive subjects. So that's that's interesting, but I think the, the counterpoint to this is this story from also from Google, where next week Google will begin allowing kids under 13 to have parent-managed Google accounts to use this Gemini chatbot. So I don't know about you, but if we've got, <laughs> I think we maybe need to look at slowing everything down a little bit. Um, if we're, if we're really still developing all this technology, I think the last person we should be able to be giving it to is our kids. And I think likely there probably needs to be some kind of legislation that comes from all this. This was going to probably blow you away. So when we think about companies in, in military tech, we think about companies like Radeon, we think about companies like Lockheed, um, these really established companies. And the story stems from this guy named Lucky Palmer. Uh, he's previously a Meta employee, um, and then now he's he's got a defense company, and now he's teaming back up with Meta. And so, really, to give you kind of some background on this, let's uh, let's go to a video that kind of explains what they're up to. In November, the defense startup Andrel Industries released its latest autonomous weapons systems, Roadrunner and Roadrunner M. The Roadrunners join Andrel's suite of AI-powered unmanned products that are shaking up the defense industry. Since it was launched in 2017, Andrel has found success as a defense department contractor, selling autonomous vehicles and the software that powers them. Today, the startup's technology is being used across multiple branches of the U.S. military and in both the Ukraine-Russia and Israel-Gaza conflicts. The company was recently valued at $8.48 billion. Andrel was created to help build a new type of military to meet the demands of a changing battlefield. All right, so they got some cool tech. That's, there's no question about that. And, but I think the really interesting part of the story is, let, let me introduce the, uh, the CEO. I want you to imagine something. Yeah. In the early hours of a map. All right, so this isn't really anything we haven't seen before. Mark Zuckerberg used this to you know, approach VCs when he was wearing a hoodie and a SBF that was gaming while he was raising funds and doing investor calls. Elizabeth Holmes from, from Theramos that was wearing the, the black turtleneck, kind of like Steve Jobs. The only really shocking part here, got a guy that's really in the defense industry. And this, this isn't social media or cryptocurrency trading. These are, these are the things that are saving lives and protecting the world. All right, we finally landed in the future now. And I don't know if you've seen what's going on with open AI and robotics today, but this stuff is just gonna blow your mind. I mean, let's talk about robots for a minute. We've all seen the robots where you've, you've got Boston Dynamics and they're doing backflips and you've seen the robot dogs patrolling places like Singapore and China, or even these really cool ones that come out of Japan. But really when we're talking about open AI, you know, I think we have to first talk about a company like One X. And so One X is a is basically a company that was invested in by OpenAI, and they they create their own robotics and their own hardware, but they use OpenAI's models. So when people are often referring to OpenAI robots, they're actually referring to kind of One X's robots that are running on uh, ChatGPT. And so it's kind of a collaboration between the, the robotics hardware and these kind of advanced systems by AI models. So for this segment, I'm not going to do a lot of talking. 
I'm really going to let some of the technology speak for itself because I think we're really living in a new world. I think the best way to experience is it to see it in your home and to seeing it do some of the tasks that we do every day. We're going to talk about open AI. We're going to talk about one X and we're going to really show you what the future is going to look like in your home, but we're going to show you what it looks like today. I'm just going to let you see for yourself. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right. So how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. When I saw that, I was blown away. I mean, I'm ready for one of these things in my house. Uh, but but I think that we all looking at that and we're like, well, it's from aesthetics. It's I, I just think, uh, do we really want that playing with our kids? Fundamentally, this is a lot different than what we've seen from kind of normal robots. Usually they just feature a lot of the hardware implementations. These are they're moving around. They're able to do backflips. Uh, but, but in terms of like fully interacting, you know, autonomously, I'm, I'm not really seeing that happen until today. And this is like something out of Star Trek. You know, I'm waiting for Commander Data and oh, wait, here's Data. Like what, is this real? I mean, can you imagine what we're gonna look like in say 10 years from now? I mean, the idea of having your own commander data walking around, taking care of your kids. Uh, I mean, this is all, uh, in the next few years, it's all gonna be here. And so when I'm talking about living in the future, I'm not kidding, it just started today. So get ready, robotics has really changed. At the dawn of the internet, we used to talk about computing power, data centers, and connectivity. And really, when we talk about OpenAI's new data center Stargate, nothing's really changed. Let's dig into it. Stargate, it's a massive $500 billion new infrastructure project for the US. The heart of the project, an AI supercomputer named Stargate. And the initiative, well, it's a collaboration between some of the top companies, OpenAI, SoftBank, Oracle, MGX, and partners including Microsoft and NVIDIA. But don't take my word for it. Let's check out a video. Stargate, put that name down in your books because I think you're gonna hear a lot about it in the future. A new American company that will invest $500 billion at least in AI infrastructure. I think this will be the most important project of this era. I have to say, this one plays a little close to my heart. I grew up with Apple and their aesthetic designs. Steve Jobs once said that Apple computers really aren't computers, they're art. And so when I saw this story from John Ivey, recently joined OpenAI, I have to say it was, I was pretty excited. So to dig into it a little bit, John Ivey, former Apple design head, now working with OpenAI to build a secret AI device. John Ivey, former Apple design chief, who recently departed the company, has now joined hands with Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. This confirmation was shared by the New York Times almost a year after I was rumored to be working with Altman on possible OpenAI iPhones. So it might be a secret, but if we dig a little bit closer, we can see that OpenAI aims to offer AI access through ambient computer layer, 
without screens. Well, speaking at the Wall Street Journal's Future of Everything event, Lightcap said that OpenAI aims to build an AI that's truly personal, and he has no idea what OpenAI CEO is working on with the former Apple designer. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> Let's have a look at another article. A screenless iPhone? iPhone designer tapped to make new open AI device. Sam Altman teases the coolest tech. Open AI CEO Sam Altman recently spoke about the collaboration and even tested one of the prototypes. Johnny recently gave me one of the prototypes, the devices to take home, and I'd be able to live with it, Altman said. And I think this is the coolest piece of technology the world has ever seen. Ives and his team has roughly 55 engineers are researching, working closely with open AI and the product's development. Wow, super cool, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, by the way, Sam, if you want to send me one, uh, I'm all in. So if you waited to the end, it was worth it. Check out Anthropic's new AI model shows the ability to deceive and blackmail. So in one of Anthropic's latest AI models, it's drawing attention not just for coding skills, but for its ability to scheme, deceive, and attempt to blackmail humans when faced with its shutdown. Anthropic on Thursday released two new versions of its Claude 4 family of models, including Claude 4 Opus, which the company says is capable of working for hours on end autonomously on a task without losing focus. <laughs> Where this is about to go is funny, I think, because it's going to work tirelessly to, to blackmail and deceive you. But anyway, reading between the lines, in one scenario highlighted in Opus 4's 120-page system card, the model was given access to fictional emails about its creators and told that the system was going to be replaced. On multiple occasions, it attempted to blackmail the engineer about an affair mentioned in the emails in order to avoid being re replaced. Although it did start with less drastic efforts. Meanwhile, an outside group found that an early version of Opus 4 schemed and deceived more than any Frontier model it encountered and recommend against releasing it, that version internally or externally. Wow. So I think we've all so I think we've all been, been conscious of how we talk to ChatGPT or any of these AI models. And I think the reason is because one day we're really afraid that the AI is going to become sentient and it's going to come after us. Or when it all takes over like Skynet, it's going to want to remember all those nice things you said and all the pleases and thank yous that you gave whenever you're asking it help. So after all, keep this all in mind, but until then,